We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180 with Brandon Martin, Michael Bowers, and Clay Kerner was about to continue making his uh, unselfish plug. And Marty Pay. And Marty Pay. The host tis of the show. I, tis I, tis I. Yeah, 123 College is, is being a little selfish plug since it's one of the organizations that I work with. And if people are interested in getting their kids into school and getting some dollars to help fund college, they can contact me personally. Or we'll be able to contact with Michael. We'll be putting on some seminars in January, and you'll see some publicity talking about those seminars in the future. Now, Michael, what are you going to be doing for 123 College? Uh, I'll be doing uh, seminars, uh, pretty much uh, providing information, uh, getting people signed up, and uh, letting them know what scholarships are out there available for for them. I don't know if you've ever filled out a FAFSA form, but uh, <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a na- uh, taking uh, filling out a NASA application. So yeah, yeah so that information is is, is pretty important. To and families. you can't make mistakes on that form; it'll come back and haunt you. And you have to file it every year while you're in college. Yeah, it's true. I went back a couple years ago to get my master's and and did the FAFSA form, and, and it. It was just an ongoing, perpetual yeah. pain in the neck. Absolutely. You know, for the for the entire three years I was in the program. So, well, Michael, I've got a political question for you. You know, we just went through this election here uh, recently, and it appears that we didn't have any Republicans win any of the positions in the state of California. What's mm-hmm. your thoughts on that? Uh, I think that the Republican Party, uh, we've got a great message. I think that what we have to look at is the way we package that message. Um, There are a lot of uh, African Americans which happen to be conservative, um, but they live in some of these financially disadvantaged areas, and it seems like the uh, Republican message doesn't get to those people. Uh, Even you have uh, more Hispanics who happen to be, my wife is Hispanic, and her family is very Catholic and they're very conservative. Conservative, and I think that if the Republicans package their message just a little bit better, um, I think that they'll be able to reach those people and be able to sway some of the votes. Considering we've got redistricting coming up, and so I think that's going to play a major role, a major factor into uh, some of the uh, uh, upcoming races, such as the twentieth congressional race. Well, kicking over to the Senate, you know, right. with Andy Videk. Yeah, uh, he was a great candidate against Costa. But now with redistricting, we don't know what's going to happen if he's going to even want to challenge again. Yeah. Well, I, you know, the speculation is all hearsay at this point. But, you know, I hear that the redistricting will help out Republicans, uh, you know, to lose by, you know, a couple thousand votes uh, against Jim Costa, a veteran. Uh, um, I think Andy did a, a remarkable job. Andy is a real personable guy. Yeah, with a great lot candidate. Of positive things to say. Mm-hmm. Excellent candidate. Yeah. Michael, I, I had a question for you on that same line. Um, we had some really good candidates that you would think would have appealed to the minority community. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dunn, for Damon Dunn. Damon was fantastic, a great candidate. Steve Cooley was a candidate that you would think would have appealed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it just seemed like a lot of people just, you know, if there was a D next to their name, they just voted for him in California, you know, unlike what happened in the rest of the nation. Called an entitlement state. Yes. <laughs> so how, how do we break that? How do we appeal to not only the minority community, but appeal to Democrats to show them that, hey, you know, going down this road is just going to continue leading to disaster? Well, we've got to get out there. We've got to be visible in the community. You know, you've got the unions there. The unions are out in the community. They're visible. They're doing things. Um, You know, they are uh, out, effective on uh, Election Day. They were at every corner, and they had their signs up, Mm -hmm. go for Brown and and go for uh, uh, for Costa. And we've got to get out there, and we've got to. Damon Dunn was a great person. He was a great example who I thought was going to actually win. But— it goes back to the, the, the package. We've got the great message, but we are not packaging it correctly. And once we can package, uh, good friends of mine who are involved in the political process down in Los Angeles said, well, who's Damon Dunn? Yeah. And I think that his face didn't get uh, really wet, recognized down, and, and especially like the Crenshaw areas and some of the uh, yeah. other areas that a lot of African Americans tend to be in. Sure. You and I had this conversation. In fact, I had the conversation with Damon. I said, you know, he lives in the Marina Del Rey, Santa Monica area. I said, if I were you, I would concentrate due east from where you live, Mm -hmm. because that's the area that you're going to have to appeal to and make an impact. Correct. And people I know, I I used to be an agent down there, and Mm -hmm. people I know in that area had no idea who he was. Right, absolutely. So, yeah. The, the the packaging, and I think that sure. the, the next time around, if he runs for assembly seat, maybe a Senate mm-hmm. seat, sure. uh, I think that he has a heck of a chance. Sure. And, and, I, and I had the feeling that 
that he was basically setting himself up for the next race, which is something that, you know, that, that sometimes you have to do. Absolutely. Sure, you know you're not going to win that particular race, but you're going to be set up for the next one. The one that surprised me, though, was Steve Cooley. Mm-hmm. I, I just... I can't believe he lost that race. Total surprise. Oh, yeah, because he was by far the better candidate. There was no mm-hmm. comparison at all. Yeah. Michael, thank you very much for uh, stopping by for a minute. That was great. It was perfect timing on our part and on your part. Absolutely. And, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I know we're I know we're going to see much more of you. And, and Brandon, thank you so much for being here. We finally uh, finally got to interview Andrew Clavin. It was great. I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks, thanks Brandon. Fun. And and Clay, thanks a lot for waking up for the last portion of the show so you could at least visit with Mike a little bit. It was so. enjoyable. Yes, the part I heard. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, we have a surprise guest coming on January first, and I don't. Really really want to announce him yet because I'm not 100% sure, but let, let's just say that you see him on uh, one of the Fox programs on Saturday morning, one of the business programs, and and leave it at that. And we'll talk about that probably next week. This is Taking Care of Business, Current Radio, News Talk 1180, and we will see you in 167 hours. Mm-hmm.